everyone my name is evie lupine welcome back to my channel and today i have another video for you all today we are going to be talking about how to make consent sexy or fun or romantic whatever it is you want it to be but i am someone that talks a lot about consent and how important it is be that for just regular vanilla stuff, be that for kink, for poly, for anything you're doing really, I think with another human being, you gotta have consent. And the one thing I hear over and over and over again, especially when I am talking about more detailed things like negotiations and contracts and all that mumbo jumbo is, well, I don't know. This just sounds like you're taking all the fun out of it. How am I supposed to enjoy myself with all these rules and having to talk about it first? And I think, you know, I could have a very uncharitable reaction to that and be like, well, then you are somebody that doesn't care about consent and just wants to shove it in, you know? And I think thinking about that more complexly, <laughs> I think a lot of us, you know, most of us that grew up with Western movies and TV shows, when you get older and you start seeing the movies that have sex in them, you know, or at least the allusion to it, there's not a lot of like sit down conversations about how do you like giving oral sex? Are you open to that? Like just <laughs> not anything like that is happening. It's just raw in the moment feeling it out, sensing the energy, and then just going for it. And then if anyone says anything, it's like, yes, more, harder, please, daddy. Like, it's like sexy porn stuff, basically. And even in porn, for that matter, when you have progressed beyond just allusions to it in mainstream movies, when you get into porn, depending on what you're looking at, obviously, different porn studios, different methodologies, etc. You know, in mainstream porn, like consent is like maybe talking on a couch ahead of time about how much you love anal and then just like getting into it in the scene you know because at least that's like fiction and you should probably know that porn is generally fiction but through all of that i think we get the messaging that when you're having good sex it's just like raw you're just doing it you feel it out and if you talk it ruins the moment because when we do see talking about intimate activities it's like usually this kind of like nervous um like um, please would you um would it be okay if i I kissed you please 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 don't say no like it's like always represented as this like usually like nerdier guy with less experience that doesn't know what he wants and that if you are like a big aggressive dominant alpha male like you're gonna take what you want <laughs> and that uh is not a pathway to good consensual interactions even looking at 50 shades right looking at bdsm in you know the really only big media representation we have of it the bdsm there as well not just the sex is very much like this is just gonna happen and the one time they negotiate for where anna says show me how bad it can get the only time they have a super explicit conversation about it it's not even really that explicit they don't say what's gonna happen at all or talk about it in detail but when she says, do this thing to me, it goes terribly wrong. And so between the messaging of all these things put together, obviously, most people think talking about it equal not sexy. And keep in mind, I'm ace. Like, sexy isn't necessarily what I'm going for. You could also be aiming for romantic, for fun, for lighthearted, for just having a good time, you know? But you gotta like not think about asking for things as being bad that's really the baseline that's what i want to get to and i think the easiest place to start is with like basic vanilla either romantic or sexual like physical interactions because i think most people will start there and it's the easiest and like least complicated thing to get into and when it comes to establishing consent with someone, you know, talking about like the fries model, for example, you have to be specific with the things that you are consenting to. So consent for one thing isn't consent for something else. So if they consent to kissing, 
that doesn't mean they consent to fondling. If they consent to fondling, that doesn't mean they're okay with sex. Just because they're okay with vaginal sex doesn't mean they're okay with anal. It also doesn't mean that they are into it every single time. You may eventually establish in a relationship that once you do this, you can always do this. Once we have kissed, you know, after some time, you just kind of get that blanket consent for kissing. But that's a later step. And you can't assume that that is in place. You have to start from a place, I think, of understanding that consent for one thing is it consent for that thing all the time or consent for other things either. And going off of that, that does mean having interactions that involve a lot of checking in. And people think that looks like, um, excuse me, ma'am, please, may I, may, 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 may I kiss you now? And that's not how it has to be. Now, if you're a subby boy that is trying to appeal to the allure of a dominant woman who likes the kind of submissive man kind of being whimpering and and being so overwhelmed with her feminine power that he's groveling at the floor like you can play around with that if you want to go in that direction but for most people that are just having again kind of standard vanilla non-power focused interactions it doesn't have to be like a sort of insecure thing and when you are not used to it it can make you feel insecure and uncomfortable. It can make you feel like maybe I'm making it seem like I don't know what I want. Maybe it makes it seem like I'm not that dominant. Maybe it makes it seem like I have no experience. And those things could be true. They could not be true. And I think the way to mitigate that, first of all, is asking for consent in the moment is like, ideally the gold standard, right? We want to have those check-ins as things are happening, but a really good tool you can also use is having it be something that happens earlier on in the interaction that doesn't necessarily have to be direct in physical contact space. You could have it be over email, over messages, over text messages, over a video call, because when you are to the point where you are establishing more of a relationship, consent involving one night stands is like kind of complicated. So I'm not really gonna be focusing on that in this video. I am talking about mostly like you're starting dating, you're starting a BDSM thing, you're starting some kind of level of ongoing interactions with each other. When you have that contact, that is a really good tool you can use to build anticipation alongside affirming consent and knowing what the other person wants, right? So you might say over text, like, hey, I'm really looking forward to seeing you tonight. How do you feel about having a makeout session, right? And you can have a little cute, flirty, winky emoji or whatever. And use whatever phrasing you want. I don't know what your flirting style is. I don't know what the other person likes, but you can add in that sort of like, hey, how do you feel about this? So that way you don't have to say it in person in the moment because I think it is a lot easier to be confident when you have some distance, even during like a video call or during a text message, when you can like really double think whatever it is you're saying before you say it, before you send it. And I think that can help you be more confident, more assertive with what you want and what your ideas are. And that gives the other person more space to either counter what you're saying and say, no, I don't want this, but I want this instead. Or that sounds great. Or sorry, not really in the mood tonight. You know, I have a stomach flu. <laughs> we may have to cancel our date altogether. You also get the opportunity for the other person to give more complete consent and feel more comfortable withdrawing that consent as well, especially early on in the relationship, there can be that tension where also the other person, even if you ask, may not feel fully comfortable saying no and creating that environment where it feels safe to say no is as important, I think, as asking for the yes. Those two things have to go together. And it's also a really great way to check in about things you've previously had conversations about to make sure you're on the same page. So maybe on the last date, you were thinking about having sex and you talked about it, but weren't really ready for it. Or maybe you both had roommates at home and you couldn't get any alone time. That would be a really great chance over text before that next interaction to say, hey, I was really looking forward to having sex on our last date. And I'm really hoping that next time maybe that can happen for us, how are you feeling about it? And give that person again room to say how they're feeling about it. And then they know that sex is on your mind for that next interaction. So it's not gonna be a surprise to them. And they can say, oh yeah, I'm like really looking forward to it. And that's when you can get into that more flirty space of like 
more particular ideas that you have beyond having just like sex in general like oh I've really been thinking a lot about being able to take off your dress and slide down your panties and being able to go down on you how do you feel about that and again having that moment for check-in and it doesn't have to be like how do you feel about that it could be like and then what would happen next or what would you want me to do like you can add in other types of questions in there but that can be a space where you're basically like I sort of think about it almost like fan fiction writing together where you I mean you're sexting right like this is what you're doing you're sexting with each other at that point and you're kind of cultivating that fantasy together of like ooh, what would it be like if we had sex how would that feel like and again building up that anticipation for that future interaction now you still have to check in in the moment because especially with sexting and things some people will go way out into fantasy territory that they don't want to do in real life and so you have to especially early on be able to be like hey so we like talked about this is this still on the agenda is this something that you're still kind of into and wanting and I think it also gives you the space to talk about certain things that can be kind of mood killers like what are you not into what do you find repulsive what are your limits what are your boundaries if you're thinking in kind of more BDSM terms and if you're going into that in the moment and you're physically together in person hearing those no's can be more difficult and it can be more difficult to ask for what those no's might be if you are uncomfortable with hearing what they could end up being and so having that text message means that you have that space where you can talk about those things together not ruin the moment and also have a record of it for future interactions so you can remember what your partner said like was okay and wasn't okay of course again always check in in the moment but having that reminder especially if you are maybe poly you have multiple partners trying to remember all those things for multiple people can be more difficult so having those reminders again I think it just like helps overall and it's not gonna be a bad thing now when you have gone from talking maybe longer distance into talking about what you want to do in person especially in the moment as you were getting ready that is like the next step so I think like practicing on that first level of like indirect interactions that are text-based that's like the good practice point and also it'll give you a good idea if this person is going to be compatible with the level of consent that you want to have I recently uh, heard a story from someone that I know where they were on like a first couple of dates with someone they had gone like two or three dates I think and they had a first sexual interaction with each other and afterwards they were told by the person that they found it to be a turnoff how much they asked for things during the interaction right like how much they asked about checking in and what the person wanted what they liked they thought it made the person seem submissive and that they weren't dominant enough to be compatible <laughs> with that person which I find very funny because I know that person and we have played together we've done BDSM stuff together they are plenty dominant and checking in doesn't make someone not dominant I think that's just like the stereotype of like oh my god you're asking again don't you know what to do don't you read my mind and like expecting someone to magically know what you want when every person wants oral different every person prefers to be fingered a different way every person is okay with different things and not okay with others what is really hot and amazing to one person is not for the other you can't generalize and make assumptions you can't say all women want this all men want this all non-binary people want this right like you can't just like make broad strokes because that is how you make mistakes and that is how you make things uncomfortable or just not fun and personalized right you want to feel like you're having a personal interaction with someone not like somebody going through the motions of like uh, according to my fact sheet about women uh, I do a b c and d and then orgasm happens <laughs> That's not how it works you might get eventually a personalized list of a b c and d but you can't just have one that works for all women or all men or all whoever right that's just not something that's going to happen but getting back into consent when you're doing things in person and how to make that more sexy and more enjoyable the disadvantage is you have to be more confident when you say it you can't delete you can't ruminate over a message for 20 minutes you have to just like say it and get it out there but you can take advantage of body language and tone of voice and volume of voice to communicate certain things and to go from that like oh my god please can we please do this blah, 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 that very like nervous approach into that more like confident 
dominant kind of a setting. And I think there's a lot of like subtle quick ways you can do this. So maybe you went to dinner with someone and you were taking a walk afterwards and maybe you're holding hands in like a park. Maybe you lean over and you whisper in their ear, hey, I'd love to take you home, right? It's not saying I am taking you home. They're in a public place where it's easy to say no and you haven't assumed that you're taking them home. That is the thing I think a lot of people do, especially in like beginning dates, is they assume one thing's gonna happen and the other person is not on the same page. This is as much about being on the same page as it is just about consent, right? Because if they were thinking, you know, I might do this personally for me, I might not be thinking about going home at all. I might be loving the snow on the ground. I might be loving the autumn weather. Going home and having sex might not be on my mind at all. And having that interaction makes me go, oh, that's what we're doing. That's where our mind's at. Okay, needed to know that information. And I can go, yeah, I really like that. Or uh, not right now, I have to work early tomorrow, right? Again, you get to have that kind of interaction of like what's gonna happen next. And there's a million ways that you could do that, but I would recommend doing it in a public setting again and having that check-in before you go into the actual like interaction. If you're someone that is of a more dominant persuasion and you are with a submissive person and you want to kind of start playing with that a little bit, I think something you can do is, for example, if you are holding hands, it feels, you know, for me at least, more dominant to have a hand held like this around the wrist, you know, as opposed to interlocking the fingers. This feels kind of more like equal lovey-dovey romantic date, this feels like a little bit of control, you know? And you can maybe slip a hand behind someone's neck, you can hold their wrist like that, and then when you do it, you can lean over and say, hey, do you like that? And then that puts them in a position as a submissive, and I can perfectly picture this of having to be like, oh fuck, I feel a little bit controlled, and it feels good, and I like it, and then you have to kind of meekly go, you know? And so there's a little bit of that power play in that, you know, of like you're kind of having someone admit that they don't like it if they do like it and kind of forcing it out of them a little bit, having a little teeny, 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 teeny little bit of like maybe embarrassment or humiliation in that because they like might feel a little bit like, ooh, I shouldn't like this, but I do. And if they don't like it, they could go, hey, yeah, sorry, I'm not in the mood. You know, again, having those really subtle moments because listen, you don't want to be grabbing a girl's throat in the middle of a park, okay? <laughs> Don't be escalating there, but you can do a little bit more of like subtle things to allude to maybe what you want to do later or kind of feeling out, are you gonna be compatible in like a DS or a dominant sub kind of way? Be that in the bedroom or in more of a DS focused relationship. I wanna focus on DS and BDSM stuff for a second here. Cause I think a lot of dominants, especially male dominants, struggle with knowing how to check in with submissives without making it seem like they might be submissive themselves or unsure of themselves or doing something that would break like the illusion of power, you know? So I think the way that you can do this is to, again, use that body language to your advantage. So for example, if you want to propose a certain activity, maybe the way that you do it, instead of like talking to each other on like the same eye level, you know, is maybe you were sitting on the couch or standing up and you ask them to kneel for you first. It's an ask, you're not telling, you know, you wouldn't say, get on your knees, slut, unless you've, you know, again, talked about it before, but you can say, I would like it if you would kneel for me, or may you kneel for me. Like, frame it more as a question and more as a request as opposed to an order. Again, you can have the order later if you've talked about that, but at first, when you're kind of playing around a little bit, ask because you may not know maybe the person has issues with knees maybe they have some kind of condition maybe they have something where kneeling is uncomfortable and so if you're ordering them you're putting them in an awkward position where maybe they want to say yes but they can't because of something else that you don't know is going on you know so ask and request and then when they're kneeling then you can like you know maybe hold them by the chin a little bit, put a hand across their back, onto their shoulder, lift their chin up to you to meet your eye gaze, you know, whatever it is you wanna do, but have them look at you, have them be engaged in some way, in a way where they are recognizing physically, I am lower than you are and you are higher than me. And that is a lot of work for creating that atmosphere of this person has power over me and kind of activating that more like submissive part of the brain, in my experience at least. 
And then when you're doing that, then you can go into more of the request phase and negotiating for consent, but in a way that stays in that particular headspace, right? So then you can move into saying, I would love it if you would get down on your hands and knees and lick my boots. Or I would love to finger you. How would you feel about that, my darling? Like you you can frame it again in a way where it's like asking but still feels like dominant and there is still that room to say no. And if you want to say that explicitly, if you want to say, and how do you feel about that? Is that something you're up to right now? Like you can add that in there. And I think it's actually a positive because it shows that you care about consent. If you don't want to play around with the height difference stuff, you can still do things like this, even standing up at like the same height or sitting down together at a table. So for example, you might be at a restaurant having dinner, you're sitting in a booth, and then maybe you might put your hands on the table and like lean in closer towards them and like whisper against a cheek, or maybe just say really softly in like a low but kind of powerful voice. I'd love it if you would go to the bathroom for me right now and take off your panties and put them in your purse. Can you do that for me? And again, there's a question at the end there. It's not a statement, it's not an order. You can say something like, again, can you do that for me? Would you like to do that? How does that sound to you? How does that feel to you? All those things all work, right? Because it's giving them an opportunity and I'm gonna keep saying this, you gotta give people the option to say no. You cannot coerce consent out of somebody because then it's not consent, okay? Okay, yeah, you can definitely keep it subtle, you can keep it low-key in public, but you can still play around in that area. Like I've said, you can also do things like this when you're standing up, right? It doesn't just have to be when you're sitting down somewhere and they're below you and all that stuff. Although I guess when you're standing up, you could have a natural height difference that you could take advantage of. But regardless of how tall you are, I think the thing to do when you are standing up is to close the distance of physical proximity because usually we have a bubble around us. You know, we have a bubble for like what strangers are let into and then family members and then like intimate partners. And closing that gap can make it feel like you are taking a more dominant and authoritative position. Now, when you do this, any kind of physical touch at all really, when you try to get close or hold a hand or touch hair, anything like that, if someone is moving away or taking away a hand or getting farther away, trying to maintain an amount of distance, that is when you need to check in and say, hey, like what's going on here? You know, not to them, but like to yourself, like in your head, you know, hey, what, are they comfortable with me? Do they want to maintain distance? Like, do they want to be physically close to me? Like what's going on, you know? And then you talk to them about what they're going through and how they feel about it because you don't want to force a physical interaction with them. Now, assuming you can like kind of get that nonverbal go ahead to close that gap physically with them, that can again feel really dominant and more authoritative. That is when you can lean in and say something very softly to them again whispering, take advantage of it. It fucking works, I promise. But whatever it is, you can even say in like a normal speaking voice, I guess, if you want to, but focus on saying it with confidence. You can lean in and say, I really want to make you kneel for me. Do you want that too? Now, going back to something more vanilla, of course, there is the actual consent that happens during the act, right? Because consent is revocable. You can take it back at any time. And so that means checking in with what you're doing is really important as you're doing it. Not constantly, not every like two seconds, but you're looking at that nonverbal communication of like, is their face contorting in pain when it shouldn't be, when you're not doing anything BDSM pain related? Are they trying to like shrink back? Are they trying to make physical separation? Whatever it is, you wanna look at that nonverbal communication and that should be a trigger for a check-in of going like, hey, this doesn't seem right. Like I need to ask and see what's going on here as opposed to ignoring it and just doing whatever you're doing and not stopping. But otherwise, even during like an otherwise seemingly like happy, nice, good, fun interaction, you still want to evaluate how the other person is feeling and if you can change anything, what that would be. And I think this is where a lot of people trip up is like checking in in the moment because one, you are expecting the other person to be able to tell you what you need to do or what they like or what they don't like and being able to say no when they should say no. And a lot of people struggle with this. That's one aspect that makes it hard. 
Also, again, not wanting to ruin the moment, not wanting to stay in your head too much, all of those things can make it pretty complicated to do. But there are a few key things that are super simple that I swear to God will help you and make this so easy, right? What is the phrase that works the best? Probably, do you like that? If you don't know what else to say, use that phrase, right? You can use that as you're starting an action, right? You know, maybe touching some hair, going over a breast, right? Pinching a nipple, you can go, oh, hey, do you like that? And if they don't, then go, oh, no, is that really my thing? And then you move on, right? But then as you're doing it, right, you can say it even in like a rhythmic way that can actually build that orgasmic experience, you know, you can say, yeah, do you like that? Do you like that? Do you like that? And then you have that like reassurance that what you're doing is something they like. Because if they're into it, they'll probably say, oh, yes, please do it more. Yes, I love that. And actually, this should be as much as a conversation. It should be as much about how to say and consent to things as it should be asking for it. So if someone is asking this to you and you like it, go along with that. Say, yes, yes, I love what you're doing. Do it more do it harder. You can even, in answering yes, if you do want something really subtle to change, that's when you can add it in and kind of like, I don't know, not make it sound like you're complaining, but like still say, yes, please, I love that more harder. Or yes, I like it, but slow down. Or yes, I love it, can you kiss me? Like you can build in asking for one thing while consenting to something else. So like it's a little two for one deal there. And I think the person that's asking for something to be done to them has the most opportunity to make that come across sexy in like the simplest way possible. So please ask for what you want. That's how you're going to get what you want, right? That could be as simple as saying like, oh my gosh, can you choke me? I would love that right now, you know? And of course they can always say, no, I don't feel comfortable with that. Or they can just not do it, you know? But you put it out there. You put it into the space. If you want to go in a more subby direction, You can play around with titles maybe if you're open to that. You can maybe say please a lot. I think begging, pleading, saying please really helps emphasize how much you want something and puts you in a submissive headspace where you can ask for what you want for things to be done to you that I don't think like violates feeling submissive. Like I think like begging and asking like, oh my gosh, please, please come in me. Like that usually doesn't come across as like, I don't know, like topping from the bottom. to most people, it could to someone, but I think it's a lot like easier when you're like begging and asking and pleading in that way and saying please a lot versus like, come in me now, you know? You can ask for the same thing and say it in a very different way and have completely different power dynamics with that, right? You know, small tweaks, that's what really makes a difference. And if you're still learning about how to deal with this whole consent thing and it seems kind of unusual to you, it seems forced, it seems awkward, the simplest thing you can do is just add okay at the end of whatever you're saying. So you might usually say like, I'm gonna rip your clothes off right now, or I'm gonna fuck you. You might add on a little bit of an okay at the end as a question, because then it's like, I'm gonna fuck you now, okay? And just that little bit of room, just that little teeny teeny four letters is more consent minded and gives the person more opportunity to opt out or counter with something else that they would prefer to do instead. So I have been rambling for a while now and I hope that some of my examples have been helpful, giving you some ideas. I do wanna do a little bit of like a speed round of summarizing what I have said so far and adding in some new ideas before we end the video. So step one, is consent in advance and taking advantage of advanced communication to feel things out, right? That could be talking over text about what you want to do in the future, sharing fantasies, checking in about plans you already have that could also be talking about like, let's say hentai or erotica that you really like and using that as kind of a second, like secondary mechanism for sharing what you want to do, giving examples and using that as a tool for building anticipation. And then when you move into going from a non-sexual in-person interaction into something more sexual or into a BDSM direction, that is when you move into that more physical space of asking about what you want to do in that moment, but not necessarily physically doing it right then, just proposing what you want to do as a next step and checking in there or checking in about things you've already talked about doing and seeing if that still 
feels hot. Then when you move into that actual doing of things, when you are doing the activities, that is when you get that final chance for a check-in. You can say repetitive phrases and say, yeah, do you like that? Yeah, you want this, don't you? Like you can use those repetitive phrases to check in as you were already doing an activity that usually doesn't feel out of place for most people. You can also use this as a chance to request certain things be done for you, right? You can say, yes, please choke me, daddy. You can say, oh my God, yes, please do that more and be proactive with asking for things that you want. If you're not really sure where someone's head is at, you can check in with them and say, hey, what are you thinking about right now? Or what do you want me to do to you? So that way they feel like it is a safe place and a safe time to talk about things they might want, but maybe feel insecure talking about. And then finally, if all else fails, if you don't really know what else to do and this feels kind of uncomfortable, just adding okay and really short little four letter check-ins basically to the ends of things you would already be saying, gives that opportunity to affirm consent and gives people space to say no. And then finally, I think the fourth step is checking in after things are done. Not like two seconds after you finish a scene or right after you orgasm, but you know, within an hour during aftercare or maybe the next day, but not like, you know, a month later, like check in sooner, but not like two seconds soon somewhere in there. Find a happy medium that works for you and what you have time for. But somewhere in there, talk about what happened and say, hey, you know, maybe you really love what happened. And you say, hey, I love what we did the other night we saw each other. How did you feel about it? What did you like? What did you want more of? You know, and I think that would be really awesome to do. And I think that wouldn't turn off most people. I guess it could for some people. But something I haven't said so far that is really important is Consent is a two-way street. And if someone is turned off by you asking for consent, they're not very likely or as likely to ask you for consent. And do you really want to interact with someone, play with someone, have sex with someone that is uncomfortable with check-ins and establishing thorough consent? If you want that and they don't, that's going to be a point of tension and lack of compatibility that I don't think is really easy to resolve. So keep that in mind as well. Like if someone is turned off by you checking in and you wanna check in, probably not gonna be a good fit and not necessarily a safe position to be in in general. But if you can check in and ask like, hey, I really love what we did last night. How did you feel about it? Or if it didn't go so well and you can kind of laugh about it and go, oh, well, that last time was awkward. What do you think we could do better next time? Because just because one time was awkward doesn't mean they all have to be awkward. And that checking in, that consent framework is how you make sure it's not awkward the second time. Because if you're just like randomly feeling things out and going with the flow and not saying anything, and you know it's awkward, but you don't know how to stop it because you're not communicating. You're just, you're just gonna keep getting the same stuff over and over again. It's only through checking in and communicating with your partner and saying what you want and them saying what they want that you can really make something work and be sustainable. And I think the very, very last thing is not just like how you can ask for consent, how to make it sexy in the moment, but how to change mentally how you feel about asking and receiving consent if you're not used to it. If you go into it with that mindset of like, asking means being submissive, or asking is stopping from the bottom, or asking means that I don't have confidence, or it means they're not gonna be into me because I'm gonna turn them off, or I am turned off by someone asking me and being annoying and asking too many questions. Like if you go into it with that negative mindset of feeling not positive about having those behaviors, you're not gonna do the behaviors because it's gonna feel awkward and then you're just gonna like perpetuate the cycle of not talking and not communicating. If you can change your mindset, if you can decide to think about it, like this is a fun, positive, sexy thing, I'm excited about doing it, this is gonna be a benefit to this relationship and it's gonna make us have better sex, more sex, better BDSM scenes, changing the way you think about the approach can actually count for a lot. And I think really at the end of the day, it's about taking advantage of verbal and nonverbal communication skills. It's about being confident in what you say. It's about knowing yourself well enough to know what you want and being able to ask for what you want. And all those things 
working together alongside the actual asking process. I did talk a lot about the actual like practical part of it, but that internal work is also a key step. So if you're not able to understand what you want, how do you know when to say no? How do you know when to stick up for yourself? How do you know what to tell a partner to do? If you're just going with a blank slate and say, do whatever you want to me, I don't really care. You're not giving your partner anything to work with and it's gonna be really hard to have a consistent positive interaction on that basis. So just remember that. But anyways, I think that is everything that I have to share today. Thank you for sticking it through the awkward half hour of an asexual attempting to tell other people how to have good sexy interactions even though they don't really care about sex. But uh, yeah, thank you for sticking it out. I would love to know what you will have to say in a comment down below. What do you do that works for you? What techniques do you find are the most helpful? How do you feel about all this? Let me know again down below if you have not already and you wanna make sure to not miss out on any of my other videos, please do subscribe because I make all sorts of videos twice a week, usually about BDSM, kink, relationships, asexuality, polyamory, all that good stuff. And if you wanna support what I do and you have not already, please do check out my Patreon. A link to that will be down below. That is what makes my channel possible. That is what makes these videos possible. If you do already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.